This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Soy Bifa Jackrich. In the coming years, Satoki Kano needs to replace almost a dozen aging machines at his Tokyo's base maker of acrylic panels, a major undertaking that he worries will become even more expensive. Japan's central bank this week raised interest rates for the first time in 17 years and scrapped its negative rates policy. While the move is more symbolic than anything else, rates remain pinned near zero. It has nothing less opened the door to something Japan hasn't seen in decades. A world where it will cost more to borrow money. Now, millions of Japanese, from small business owner like Kano to first time home buyers, are sizing up to how to adapt to higher borrowing costs after the long lean years of deflation when prices, wages, and the cost of money change little. How they cope will have vast implications in an economy where small and medium sized companies employ some 70% of the workforce and private consumption accounts for more than half of the gross domestic profits. Kano worries about the potential pace of rates increases too much too quickly and Japan won't be able to adapt, he said. His company, Shinchi Ho, has almost 100 million yen in loans, but that's at a fixed rate. Israeli forces have detained hundreds of Hamas and Islamic Jihad fighters, including a number of security officials and military commanders, during its extended raid into Gaza's main hospital, the military main spokesperson said. Israeli troops entered the Al Shifa hospital in Gaza City in the early hours of Monday morning and have been convened through the sprawling complex, which the military say is connected to a tunnel network used as a base for Palestinian fighters. It say troops have killed hundreds of fighters and detained over 500 suspects, including 358 members of the Islamic militant group Hamad and Islamic Jihad, the largest number since the beginning of the war nearly six months ago. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, Israel's main military spokesperson, said special forces units had used deception tactics to surprise the fighters and had several damaged Hamad and Islamic Jihad. Among the detainees were three senior Islamic Jihad military commanders and two Hamads of officials responsible for oppression and occupied West Bank as well as other Hamans internal security officials. There was no immediate comment from Hamans or Islamic Jihad. Al Shifa, the Gaza Strip's biggest hospital before the war, is now one of the few health care facilities even partially operational in the north of the territory and had also been housing displaced civilians. Israel faced heavy criticism last November when troops first raided the hospital. The troops uncovered the tunnels there which they said had been used as command and control centers by Hamans. Hamans and medical staff denied that the hospital is used for military purposes or to shelter fighters. The world's biggest central banks are on the starting line of reversing a record string of interest rate hikes, but the way down for borrowing costs will look very different from the way up. There will be no floodgates or fireworks. Instead, banks on opposite sides of the Atlantic are likely to move in the smallest increments with periodic passes, fearing that ultra low unemployment could rekindle inflation rates still above their targets. The eventual bottom for interest rates is also set up to be far higher than the historic lows of the last decade and mega shifts in the structure of the global economy could put borrowing costs on a higher path for years to come. Central banks started to jack up rates from the late 2021 as post-pandemic supply constraints and surging energy prices on Russia's war in Ukraine sent inflation into double-digit territory across much of the world. Those seemingly synchronized response tanked prices and inflation will be put just above or already at targets to percent for more most big economies in this year. Instead, the Swiss National Bank became the first major central bank ease policy with a surprise 25 basis point cut to its key rate as inflation is already in the 0% to 2% target range. The move also ends rampant investor speculation that policymakers will be hesitant to move before the US Federal Reserve since any rate cut is certain to weaken the currency and push up imported inflation. A 62-year-old man with end-stage renal disease has become
become the first human to receive a new kidney from a genetically modified pea. Doctors from Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston announced. The 4-hour surgery performed on March 16th marks a major milestone in the quest to provide more readily available organs to patients. The hospital said in a statement, the patient, Richard Slayman of Weymouth, Massachusetts, is recovering well and expected to be discharged soon, the hospital said. Experts are keenly interested in long-term results of the groundbreaking animal to human transplant, said Dr. Jim Kim, Director of Kidney and Pancreas Transplantation with USC Transplant Institute in Los Angeles. Slayman had received a transplant of a human kidney at the same hospital in 2018 after seven years on dialysis, but the organ failed after for five years and he had resumed dialysis treatment. The kidney was provided by eGenesis of Cambridge, Massachusetts from a peak that had been genetically addicted to remove genes harmful to a human recipient and add certain human genes to improve probability. The company also inactivated viruses inherent to pigs that have the potential to infect humans. Kidneys from similarly addicted pigs raised by eGenesis have successfully been transplanted into monkeys that were kept alive for an average of 476 days. And in one case, for more than two years, researchers reported in October in the journal Nature. Drugs used to help prevent rejection of the pig organ by the patient's immune system included an experimental antibody called Tegoproba developed by Aladdin Pharmaticals. This is really a battle between good and evil. Evangelical TV preacher Hank Kuneman says of the slew of criminal charges facing Donald Trump. There's something on President Trump that the enemy fears. It's called the anointing. The Nebraska pastor who was speaking on cable news show Flashpoint last summer is among several voices in Christian media passing the message of biblical proportions. The 2024 presidential race is a fight for American soul and a persecutor Trump has God's protection. They are just trying to bankrupt him. They're trying to take everything he got. They're trying to put him in prison. Author, media personality and self-proclaimed prophet Lance Warner said in October on the Gene Baker Show, an hour-long daily broadcast that focuses on news and revelations about the end times that it says we are living in. In both 2016 and 2020 elections, evangelical voters staunchly supported Trump despite claims of adultery and sexual misconduct, which he denied. With Trump now facing dozens of criminal charges as he pursues a second term, some Christian media are blustering his support by portraying him as an instrument of God's will who faces persecution by his foes. While the people making these claims are largely outside the mainstream in Christian media, they have amazed significant online followings and their messages reverberate across radio, radio shows, cable TVs and streaming platforms that reach millions of Americans every day. The claims that Trump benefit from divine help presence are Jaren counterparts point to the views voiced by his critics who denounced him as an immoral grifter set on dismantling democracy and points to his inflammatory rhetoric about immigrants in the country illegally and opponents he has threatened to prosecute. prosecute. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your, on your screen. Happy, happy Friday.